we have half the night to ourselves. Where do we go? Okay, I, I wanna visit. I wanna visit our wizard. Wait, do we still have D'Angelo, or is he off the board now? D'Angelo is off, off the, board the board for right now. All right, let's go visit our. Wi oh, wait, are we still hungry? Yes. Yes. So we have the scarred one. We have somebody's watching me part three. Our stalker. We have our journalist friend. We have the guy at the cathedral. And we have Agathon. Let's... Okay, here's the thing. We don't want to do nothing for Sophie right now. We don't want to do anything with Sophie. So we kind of want to avoid our stalker right now. Here, you want the stick? Get the stick. <laughs> You're supposed to get the stick. I kind of want to go check in on Agathon. Let's check in on Agathon. Let's get like our final, mm -hmm. final memory of her coterie. Yeah. Agreed. Agathon! <laughs> One of these nights, you'll have to buy something. You reflect as you ring the doorbell of the occult bookstore that serves as Agathon's haven. Perhaps something about auras or tarot. The same sleep-deprived blonde woman you saw on your first visit opens the door for you. Each kindred has their own servants, and Agathon seems to go for the tired Wiccan mom type. Nepeta says she wants you- uh, Nepeta says Sophie wants you to call her mommy and won't give you a choice. Oh. We have a stranger. Oh. oh. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You don't do women's voices often. You go ahead. Oh, it's you. Come in. The woman disappears into the back. Uh, sorry, into the back room, even as you close the door behind you. Lacking any better directions, you make your way up the stairs. And at first, you thought the chanting was part of the ritual soundtrack that plays in the shop even at night. As you reach the second floor, you realize that it's Agathon's voice. You come up just in time to see him standing in the middle of his ritual paraphernalia with his wrist cut open over a wrought iron, st uh, wrought iron stand holding a blood red stone. Stone. <coughs> Ooh. As Agathon chants, blood drips from the wound in his wrist onto the stone, and it looks as if he's absorbed into it. It's probably not a good idea to interrupt blood rituals, so you wait in silence as Agathon finishes. A few minutes later, he opens his eyes and smiles ruefully. Jeez, do you need a fucking cigarette? <laughs> uh, who had I, Agathon? Again. You did. Fuck. I've had, oh yeah, you wanted to be Agathon. Mm -hmm. I've had so many of these rituals. I hope it's not too off-putting for you. Agathon smears a bit of his own, uh, a bit of his own blood over the wound, and you see it close. It looks like he does this so often, he barely pays attention to it anymore. Okay. I'm cool. It's icky. Aren't vampires supposed to be into blood? <laughs> cool. I'm cool. Brad energy! <laughs> humor. We need some humor. We've used humor with him before, and we know he's at least somewhat on some level appreciated it. Whoa! Hugh the mm -hmm. furry lover. Welcome on in. Hello. Hello. Brad energy! Alright, fine. Aren't vampires <laughs> supposed to be into blood? I thought all vampires were blood fetishes. <laughs> Unavoidably. We don't all advertise it, though. Agathon picks up the blood red stone from its head. That's it! You- God! I love Agathon! <laughs> he is baby. This is a bloodstone. Could be useful. Is it actually a bloodstone or is it a bloody stone? <laughs> Don't I mean it's probably yes. both. <laughs> it is a bloody bloodstone. <laughs> he doesn't seem inclined to elaborate. Anyway, let's go. Yay. Okay. He pockets the stone and leads you back down the stairs outside to his car, and soon you're on your way to Queens and Flushing Meadows, Corona Park. <laughs> Coronavirus <laughs> Coronavirus <laughs> Fuck. After parking the car, you follow Agathon on foot as he leads you deeper into the park. Hey, we've been here before. Hey. This is where we got attacked. Yeah. The first time. Coming to a New York park in the middle of the night might have uh, might have worried you when you were alive, but now it's normal. If someone tries to mug you, it just means you'll have an opportunity to feed, which I'm here for. Yep. Yeah, let's, let's, let's make sure we eat something. 
Yes. Agathon walks with purpose, as if he knows exactly where to go. You see the Unisphere, the giant metal sculpture of the Earth, lit up so park goers can appreciate it at night. Mm -hmm. You're not sure how Agathon picks his ritual spot, but he must have a purpose in mind. The sculpture stands in the background, giving his preparations an added dramatic weight. Ooh. Stand watch while I perform the ritual. It'll reveal whether the notes we seek are here. Oh. It's open. Here's this is like our third one with him, right? So I think it's like third mm -hmm. time's the charm. Yeah. And then he joins. Mm-hmm. Does Danny grow features in the story, or is that in the next book? Who is Danny? Also, we don't do spoilers book. here, so just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. I'll lose control of the incantation if you fail to keep me free of distractions. Okay. It doesn't look like there are many people around. You settle in for a boring half hour while Agathon mumbles and makes strange gestures, spilling drops of blood at regular intervals. Nope, you're good. Don't worry. You're good. Just, just a heads up. From the outside, the ritual is not particularly flashy. Agathon repeats a mantra under his breath and walks back, uh, sorry, walks with measured steps until he stops and turns around, walking back. It looks as if there's an invisible structure he must follow, unseen patterns and limits governing his movements. As choreographies go, it doesn't look particularly difficult to learn, but you suspect there are hidden dimensions of skill and understanding involved. A lone, drunken woman <laughs> walks towards you. Hard to say what she's doing at the park. She's a little older, white, and dressed like a suburban divorcee. Feed. It's a soccer Feed. mom! Wait, what does her haircut look like? Is she a Karen? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I don't give a if fuck. He's a Karen, Feed. can we... Oh. Oh, what? what's your friend doing? He's kind of hot. Oh, God. What? The woman's words are slurred by alcohol, but she seems to have decided that you are this evening's entertainment. Oh, I was just going to ask about the hair. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what you just walked into. I'll show you tonight's entertainment, baby. Oh, boy. Sorry, that was a little creepy. <laughs> Hey, you! Stop being weird and talk to me. No, honey. The woman honey. seems determined to walk past you towards Agathon. This looks like just the kind of interruption that he was worried about. Yep. Yeah, okay. We have a feeding opportunity. Yeah. Feed. Drink from the... W Wait, will we get drunk? We don't know. Let's find out. I mean, I'm down for finding out. Because I don't think she'll listen to us if we say, hey, stop. Nope. Dustiest Spark has redeemed feed. Yep. What does uh, that mean? It means I take a drink out. from a glass. Ah. Uh, uh, let's drink. <laughs> Agathon is deeply immersed in his ritual. So why not use the time you have constructively? Heck yeah. Hey. You walk up to the woman from behind, grab her by the shoulders, and sink your fangs into her throat. Nom, nom, also, nom, nom. if you are curious... There we go. Blood tinged with alcohol and horniness flows into your mouth as the woman moans from the sudden pleasure of the kiss. Oh. Uh, I was suggested this stream from Ray Paul Pack Keys... Love the stream so far. Well, welcome on in. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yay. Yay. Oh, I Thank need... Thank you, Ray Paul, for sending someone over. I need to sit down. Yes, you do. Just do. as you look at the wound closed, the woman collapses onto the ground, swaying and trying to sit upright. Suddenly, you hear a scream of rage. Startled, you turn around just in time to see Agathon running at the woman on the ground, his expression contorted with hatred. What, 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 what? I think Agathon's spell just went haywire. Uh, oh, we no. stopped her! Did the woman make enough noise to interfere with the ritual? Oh, come on! That doesn't explain why he's in such a rage. Remember how he said his spell might go haywire if he loses control? Yeah. 
I'm thinking his spell went haywire. I think he's lost control. Oh no. So wait, but I think we need to intervene. Yep. Yeah. This is gonna hurt. Wait. This is gonna hurt like hell, possibly. Just a heads up. You I think. I would like to point out that I think the spell would have gone haywire anyway. You step between Agathon and the woman and lift your hands up in an attempt to calm him down. What are you doing? This is not you, Agathon! Agathon looks at you wild-eyed. For a second, you're sure he'll attack you. You see him tensing for a punch. Suddenly, he snaps out of it, shaking his head, looking at the terrified drunken woman in disgust and embarrassment. Thank you. I'm so sorry you had to see that. I don't usually lose control. What the fuck, dude? What was that outburst? Sorry to break your ritual, or you look worried. Apologize, we're sorry for breaking your- sorry to break your ritual. Yeah, sorry to break the ritual, like... I don't know if it was our fault, but I'm sorry nonetheless. Also, we don't know if the ritual actually broke, actually. Yeah. Sorry to break your ritual. I know you brought me along so this wouldn't happen. It wasn't you. One of my wards was triggered. It wasn't us. Oh, so it must have been the woman then. Critter says I wouldn't be a smart ass with this guy at the moment. Yeah, but Agathon's not just any guy. Agathon's somebody that we're trying to get into our coterie. He's also somebody that we've had the pleasure of working with before, so he'll probably cut us some slack. Because, I yeah. mean, at least he knows us. Yeah, he, he's starting to get our sense of humor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we have to go now. Okay. Good. Agathon starts running towards his car and you do your best to follow. Oh, he's not just casually walking? He's running. Oh dear. We need to get the fuck out. Usually, Agathon drives more carefully than most humans, you know. But something is different. He's speeding, honking at every car that gets in your, your way. Something's after him. Oh shit. You're driving towards the Bronx and twice Agathon almost collides with another car. He's clearly not used to driving quickly, but something is overriding his usual caution. Are we sure this is Agathon? Either that or he's scared. You screech to a stop in front of a red tile apartment building. Agathon jumps out of the car and starts running, leaving you to take the keys from the ignition and close the doors. He disappears up the stairs and you follow his agitated shouting. Abuela. It's me. Yavi. Javi. Javi? 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 Yeah. Javi? Yeah. Javi. Yeah. Javi. Yeah. J's are Javier. pronounced with an H. Okay. Like Julieta. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You get to the fifth floor landing and run after what would uh, and at a ah. You get to the fifth floor landing after a run that would have left your mortal self winded to find Agathon banging on an apartment door and fiddling with his key ring. A few of the neighbors poke their heads out into the hallway, but nobody intervenes. Agathon finds the right key, slams the door open, and runs inside. You follow, entering what looks like the home of an old Mexican lady. There are portraits on the mantelpiece and a crucifix on the wall. The apartment smells musty with old age, and you detect a faint odor of vampiric blood. Sylvia? Sylvia, where are you? You come to the living room and find a body covered by a blanket in the corner of a sofa. The television is on, but the sound is off. It looks like a Spanish-language channel. Agathon tears at the blanket, pulling it away in a panic. He reveals an old woman waking up in a bleary-eyed confusion. Avi! Why are you barging in like this? Who is your friend? You're alive, abuela. Agathon hugs the old lady and then turns to you. You'll have to introduce yourself. I'll check the wards. Something triggered them, and I'll have to see if they still work. This is his human abuela. Oh. This is his grandmother. Oh, what if the ward wasn't at the park but here? I think that's what it's implying. Oh, oh baby. Sylvia snuggles deeper into her blankets. This is vampire business, isn't it? Always when there's trouble, it's the vampires. You know? Oh, well, I mean... Interesting. The plot thickens. Here's the thing. She she was asleep 
at night. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's a human. Yes. Vampires mm -hmm. can't sleep during night. Correct. She knows about the kindreds. Correct. Which means Agathon told her. Also, Javi is his uh, human name. Yep. So, basically, because he's calling her his abuela, it doesn't um, abuela mean grandmother? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so this will make sense what I'm about to say. Do not underestimate the knowledge of grandmas. Correct. Don't understand. Like, e even my grandma. Like, shit. Don't underestimate grandmas in general. You stare at her, startled. Clearly, the masquerade hasn't held in this household. <laughs> Play down the trouble, turn it into a joke, or be honest. Honesty. Honesty. She, she's knows. the best policy. Don't f with Granny. Granny didn't get to be that old because Granny because Granny takes shit from other people. Yep. Wait, should we like? Here's the thing, though. This is his abuela. Should we like downplay the trouble a bit? No. No. Okay. Sure. Uh, we'll she, be honest. She she knows what's going on. I'm gonna say just be honest mm -hmm. with her. Yep. Yes, Agathon is worried someone wants to hurt you. Anyway, I'm not your cipher. You must be his grandmother. Nobody wants to hurt me. Don't be silly. He's always worrying that boy. This is about the girl who came to visit me. I can tell. Javi's was never good at keeping secrets. So much like his mother. Uh, there was a woman. And he says, have you ever seen an abuela? You do not fuck around with the abuelas. Critter says, mm -hmm. be ready for a sandal to the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> the chancla. <laughs> You hear Agathon rummaging around in the small apartment, almost as if he's scratching at something on the walls. He's always doing that, writing on the walls with blood, making runes. I tell him to cover them with the photos and the paintings, but he won't listen. I have to do it myself. What if she was fucking with the wards? <laughs> but that, she was asleep. That explains the faint smell of vampire blood in the apartment. Uh. We are back feeding the horde. No worries. <laughs> the fly swatter. Otherwise, how can I invite my friends for tea? They'll ask questions if I have runes all over my walls. It doesn't look like a Christian home anymore. Oh. You're, not, you're not wrong, abuela. The girl who visited, mm -hmm. was her name Juno? What did she want? Or what did she talk about? Straight to the point. Yeah, yeah. was her name Juno? The girl who was here earlier, was her name Juno? Yes, that's right. A pretty name, I suppose. <sighs> she was just the kind of girl Agathon used to fall for. <laughs> oh, we're getting some tea. She was a vampire too, I expect. So naturally, she invited Juno in for a cup of tea. Mm hmm. She was just a girl. Are you a vampire? Or yes. Don't, we we've Do we already know? we've already um said don't lie to her. Uh huh. So the top, yes, the top I don't think she's a vampire because otherwise, why would there be runes? Okay. So yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you talk to your friend's parent or grandparent, all the tea is spilt, right, Dustiest? Yeah. Yeah, she was. I knew it. Poor girl. I suppose she had a life once. Agathon returns to the living room, still agitated. She wanted to send a message. If we don't let her find the notes first, she'll hurt my abuela. She just oh, she just threatened Agathon's grandmother. Ugh. No one threatens the abuela. Excuse me, while I, uh, I I'm just gonna casually go for a walk here. I have a chopstick. Good, you can stab them, I'll beat them. Take her out, Epita says. Yep, we're... That's two people on our shit list now. <clears throat> you don't fuck with Abuela. Nope. He glances meaningfully at the old woman. No, she won't. She gave me a message for you, Javi. She said to think very carefully whether your clan will really protect your loved ones. That's a threat, Abuela! 
Oh, boy, Ella! Agathon stares at Sylvia, stunned and confused. She was here to tell me that? Maybe that's good. It doesn't sound like she wants to hurt you. Was a nice girl. I can tell. Can you, Abuela? Oh, Abuela. Not your cipher. Let's go. This is all we can do here. You say your goodbyes, and soon you're back outside sitting in Agathon's car. Bye, Abuela. Bye, Abuela. What a catastrophe to think Juno was there. The words trigger when a vampire enters the perimeter, so Juno was there just as I was doing the ritual in the park. Oh. Oh. I'll take you to your haven. So like in order for us to visit Abuela in the future, we have to do it with Agathon. Or we have to give Agathon a heads up, like, hey, we're gonna go visit your Abuela to spill some tea. Just yes. give Abuela, like, 48 hours notice so she can freeze some blood pops for us. Mm -hmm. We yeah. can sit on the, on the couch and have a decent conversation. <laughs> or have, like, some blood soup. Yep. Yeah. Agathon starts the car and begins to drive towards Manhattan. He appears agitated, emotions coursing under his stoic face. Your grandmother, the mass raid, or the message? What do we want to ask about? Um, I want to know about his grandmother. I want to know about Abuela. So... Because we, I don't care about the mass raid. Look, who's going to believe Abuela? Seriously. So what the fuck is... So your grandma, what the fuck is up with that? Let's find out. Your grandmother is a very spirited woman. That's one way to put it. Mm -hmm. She's all I have left from my family. We came here from Mexico City when my parents were still alive. Oh. The kindred have always haunted my family. Every generation has its own tragedies. Oh! oh Agathon is gripping the steering wheel harder than he should. Although, he's back to his usual, careful, driving style. A masquerade breach is bad. I'm sorry this happened. Juno might still have feelings for you. Dude, I'm- I'm sorry this happened. Yeah. Yeah, like, Juno's fuck. Juno's turning out to be, like, a fucking bitch, man. Seriously. I'm sorry this happened to your grandmother, and that you have to fear for her safety. Though... If he was able to keep his grandmother in the know, this makes me think that not all kindred and kind relationships are bad and that maybe there might be some hope for a relationship with Emma at some point. Maybe. We just might have to be, like, extra, extra, yep. extra careful. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because it does give us a weak point. Mm -hmm. Also, I'd like to point out that Juno asked if you can keep... If your clan can keep your loved ones safe. Yep. Mm. And he just said that his clan has actively haunted his family yep. for generations. Yep. This is what it's like for all kindred who have a mortal they love. Oh. The thing is, if you don't want to lose your battle with the beast, you should probably hold on to those relationships anyway, even when it hurts. This flies in con this, this flies in the face of everything we've been told up until this point about that. We've been told that holding on to humans is a bad thing, but there are connection to our humanity is what we're being told here. I hope we can tell him about our sister. Please. I hope we haven't fucked things up with our sister bad enough that she'll actually like understand and possibly take us back. Right. Well, even if we like watch her from afar, that would be better than like no contact whatsoever. Like Maybe. Just money appearing in her account and stuff. Uh, but he would know better with his family sister. Yes, he would, Dustiest. Mm -hmm. Agathon drops you off in front of your haven. The experience leaves you with disquieting thoughts. You met Agathon's grandmother under awkward circumstances, but he clearly loves her very much. Mm -hmm. You don't know enough about the world of the kindred to say whether that's normal or not. It seems to keep Agathon connected to the world in a way that feels alien for some of the other kindred you've met. Perhaps there's a lesson in that. And thus is the end of the night. So, we're gonna go refill our coffee and our drinks. We, uh, we'll meet back at the top of the hour, so we're gonna take a 15 minute break. Yep. And we'll get back to our next night and see where the story takes us. It's still I'm gonna snowing go here. Bread. Yes, I'm gonna have some more bread as well. <laughs> <laughs>